The following is a production of the Averitt Sports Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome to live coverage here on the Averitt Sports Network of Averitt Women's Soccer as the Cougars host Mary Baldwin College today. We're live here at Daly Field in Danville, Virginia, where the rain has stopped, and we've got a little bit of uh, sunshine and uh, blue skies here. My name is Drew Wilson, joined by John Matriciano, and he will be joined by Dip Pinnell here for the call of today's game, but joining John here on the pregame show. John, uh, obviously the Cougars looking for their first win this year. If we go back to last year, their first win was at Mary Baldwin and they were able to string some wins together from there and actually uh, finish with a solid season. Absolutely, the way they were able to sneak into the conference tournament there near the end of the year last year. But uh, I definitely agree with you. Definitely looking for that first win. Mary Baldwin also 0-4 in the conference. They'll be looking for their first win in the conference as well. Looking at their last game, losing 2 nothing big to Piedmont last Saturday. Definitely the Cougars are going to want to turn around and think, not think about that one, but definitely see how many goals and how much they can do to Mary Baldwin to definitely get on the scoreboard quick and definitely get a, a, um, a win in the conference early, Drew. And tough weekend for the Cougars coming off a pair of conference losses here at Daly Field on Friday and Saturday. A really, really heartbreaking one nothing loss to North Carolina Wesleyan here where the Cougars lost as uh, Wesleyan scored, I believe it was the 88th minute or 89th minute of that game to, uh, to take the lead and, and win that one. And then tough 2 nothing loss to Piedmont. Um, so the Cougars, like you said, looking for their first win in conference, first win of the season, trying to get first-year head coach Sarah Chapman uh, her first victory as a head coach in the college ranks. Uh, Mary Baldwin comes into this game with a 3-4 and four record, but they're 0-4 in the USA South. Um, what do you expect today from uh, from this matchup, John? Um, I like to look towards the wings on this one and definitely in the middle as well because we got – Averitt has some tall forwards and some very quick forwards as well. Judging by – looking at the Mary Baldwin side, I'm looking at the max height of like 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, right now, and it's definitely going to be a key to win the headers and definitely get them in the air because it looks like they get – Mary Baldwin won't be able to challenge as well as Averitt will be. Also, I'm looking for speed. Averitt, uh, Mary Baldwin looking at like a 12, 13 roster right now as Averitt has – a lot off their depth they can definitely run these girls for 90 minutes but it all it all um, matters about the fitness now and the key part of soccer is the fitness and we'll see if mary baldwin is up to the challenge but right now everett's got a solid roster and they'll be looking to get the win today da drew i tell you one thing that um i think we'll have to look at today is you know walking down here it is hot and humid outside and considering it's been raining non-stop for the past week or so uh, and, and kind of cooler weather where they've been practicing. And it's going to be quite a change, kind of almost like a shock uh, factor um, in dealing with the, the humid conditions. So we'll have to see how both teams really react to that because they, you know, it's been a while since they've probably had the humidity as it is right now today. Right, and they're going to have to get used to the uh, ball skipping on the turf right back to normal. Normal, as we know, they've been last two games against Wesleyan and Piedmont were both rain games. They've been practicing in the rain, whether it was six in the morning or six at night. It was raining here in Danville, and they were practicing. Now it's back to a little, little sleek after this morning, and a little uh, dry also. So it's going to be hard to tell where the ball is going to go. But I'm sure after playing on this for so long, the veterans are going to know how to take it. Also, the turf is going to add a little extra heat to the players um, in their uh, fatigue out there. So it's going to be. Uh, Something to look for to see how long these squirrels can go and how long the cougars can go. I tell you one thing, it, we're pretty lucky to have turf. This game would have been played two years ago when they last played here in Danville. I don't know that we'd have gotten this game in on a grass field, given the soggy conditions we've had over the last week. I think I heard somewhere today where Danville has received at least six inches of rain since Friday, and uh, obviously we got some more coming uh, in the forecast uh, throughout the rest of the week and the weekend, and maybe even a little uh, tonight after the game is hopefully over. Uh, so interesting conditions uh, this time of year with all this rain. Um, but luckily this turf, really good at uh, getting the water and kind of taking it in and draining it out and, yep. and not having to worry about it. And didn't really feel too damp at all um, as we uh, walked across it earlier. So uh, have to see how that plays out today. Um, but Cougars are meeting, uh, the captains for both teams meeting with the referees right now as we're getting ready to start here. 
And, uh, going back to what you're saying about the rain and the grass, definitely by the surrounding area of the turf is flooded because luckily the way the turf uh, works is it absorbs the water, goes through, and then goes out so the water doesn't stay there. Yes, the top of the turf will stay wet and sleek, but of course it does not flood the field as you see at some other uh, turf fields in the conference or in the surrounding area of Virginia. So it is a very good turf field, don't get me wrong, but it still can be difficult to play to those that have never uh, had it. And I know the farther south you go, the less turf fields you see. Um, but right now we got a good turf, uh, turf here, and we're going to have a good soccer game. I can tell it in the air. Avery is still looking for that first victory, and uh, it looks like the captains have decided. And Drew, it looks like we're all set to go, I believe. Yeah, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups for you right here on the Avery Sports Network. Welcome back to Daily Field. We are just giving you the starting lineup, so stay tuned as you will find the starting lineup for both Averett Mary Baldwin, followed by your national anthem, followed by kickoff. So stay tuned. And your Averett University Cougars. Now introducing the starting lineup for Mary Baldwin. Number two, Shauna Bingham. Number three, Jamie Lett Corden. Number six, Bailey McWilliams. Number nine, Caitlin Yaconis. Number 10, Janelle Ramos. Number 11, Layla Williams. Number 12, Johanna Brand. Number 13, Brittany Rusticelli. Number 14, Kaylee Ann Hymans. Number 15, Brenda Santa Maria. And in goal for the Fighting Squirrels, number 18, Brittany Ten. And now, introducing the starting lineup for the Cougars. Number two, Cassidy Felt. Number three, Johanna Ornberg. Number seven, Ema Redding. Number nine, Caitlin Barber. Number 11, Sky Gunn. Number 15, Annalise Gibson. Number 21, Melissa Sanchez. Number 22, Ashley Yando. Number 24, Kylie McKean. Number 30, Amanda Gustafson. And in goal for the Cougars, double zero, Ashley Jones. The Cougars are coached by head coach Sarah Chapman. And she is assisted by Ashlyn Hardy and Sophia Minton. And now fans, please rise as we pay tribute for the playing of the national anthem.
And fans, we are all set to go. I'm John Matriciano. This is the Averett Sports Network. USA South Conference matchup coming at you live against the Mary Baldwin College Fighting Squirrels and the Averett University Cougars coming at you. I'm joined by Devontae Pinnell doing his third game today, I believe, Devontae. And I believe that he is excited as much as I am. You're getting good training there. I remember you did the uh, NC Wesleyan uh, doubleheader for us on last Saturday, and I... Uh, Heard you did a great job, and we're happy to have you here for the uh, this conference matchup right now. Uh, thank you, John. The NC Wesleyan double match doubleheader last weekend was a tough loss for the women. They lost 1-0, and like uh, Drew said earlier, it was in the 88th minute off of a corner. Um, both teams played well. I see a lot of attention on women. Hopefully, we get a win today, and we start off get our first win in the conference. Absolutely, um, Dip. I'm going to call you Dip instead of Devonte. Um, I believe that they can get this win today. Uh, looking at Mary Baldwin, they've had a tough season so far, 0-4. One loss less than the Cougars, who are 0-3. But the Cougars have uh, come up short by either, either one or two goals against conference foes. And not just any conference foes, some pretty talented conference foes, such as Methodist, NC Wesleyan, and Piedmont. So it's going to be a good matchup today. I feel like if they can get a few, girl, a few goals early here, the girls can come on top real quick. You're right there. Hopefully we can uh, win this game here and get started, for, um, get us a little confidence and uh, move forward and win a cup in the right deal last year. We have a good season this year. A little slow to start off with, but I see the team practicing hard every day and different atmosphere today, so hopefully we can come out and get this win today. And the kickoff temperature is hitting 82 degrees as we get the starting lineups out there and ready. The ball's in the center, then the ref is ready to go here. 45 on the clock now. Number uh, 18, Brittany 10, goalkeeper freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia. Again, the start and goal for the Mary Baldwin College Fighting Squirrels. And Ashley Jones, her third game in the goal as well as Avery University has been plagued by injuries back there. But regardless, she has done a very good job holding some top teams in the conference to one or two goals a game. Speaking of Ashley Jones, last week when we played NC Wesley and she had uh, double-digit saves to keep us in the game to the end. So she's been playing very well. We're starting off well, we have a quick attack by Avery on the far side. With Johanna into a cross looking for Scott Gunn. 30 seconds in, already got our first shot from Sky Gunn there, the freshman from Delray Beach, Florida. Very promising prospect out of there as she came in. Um, here it has a great shot, great technical ability. It's number six, Bailey McWilliams for Mary Baldwin, clearing it out, and it's immediately picked up by the Cougars. Going back to the first shot of the game, it was um, a low cross into Scott Gunn, and she uh, shot shoot with her off foot, her weak foot, her left foot, and it went a little bit over the goal. It was on a little on target, but a little just too high. Didn't threat the goalie, and then it, into a clear out for them. But now we had a ball back in possession, and here we go again. It looks like Mary Baldwin's playing a very high line right now. As it was Sky Gunn who was caught by it in the first offsides of the game. You are right. That was a very high line. Sky Gunn was at least five or six yards offside. So hopefully we adjust our runs and slow down and be ready to go. I believe we can use our speed to factor because I believe we're a little faster than them in the back line. Just use our speed and time our runs better and we'd be open and ready to go since there's so much space back, back there. Yep. And we were talking about formations before the game. It looks like our Lady Cougars are uh, in a 4-2-3-1. Sky Gun being the lone striker, but has the very fast Swedish ladies on the wings, Johanna Ornberg and Amanda Gustafson. And in the center is Annalise Jobis. This is that is a little different from last week. Yeah. Uh, John, we did change the formation a little bit. We did have a little more like a 4 one, two, three, with just uh, one strike in the middle, and then we got kind of like a center forward and a strike also with Andy in the middle also, so hopefully we can get a better attack going and um, just make sure we sprint back on defense just in case a counterattack happens. Yes, and with this high line, it looks like the defense hasn't moved past their own 40. <laughs> they're very bunched in the middle, but they're not sitting in on the Cougars. They're attacking, and they're, uh, they're trying to get goals here early just as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, where Averitt has sat in against the good teams. Um, Murray Baldwin not as strong as Wesleyan or Piedmont, but able to um, make a difference here as it is a four-on-four four here led by Gustafson with uh, 
Her teammates are offsides waiting for someone to come through. She tries to play it off to Barber, but Barber mishandles it. And there's Yondo to clean it up from a through ball by the Baldwin player. Gustafson up to Emer, unable to control it here. This is number two to throw Yona Bingman. Uh, John, being a goalie yourself, um, when you have a team that's playing such a high line, is it hard on a goalie because there's so much space, or is it easier to communicate, or what would you expect? Would you rather your team back up a little bit or keep this high line just to make it tough on the runs, but also a little more space for you in the back to see what's going on? Well, I personally uh, don't mind at all if my team's playing a high line because that means if they play through, that way I have more time to react mm -hmm. and I can make a decision on if I need to come out and clear with my feet or if it just comes in the box or if my defense is able to clear it. So I don't mind the high line. I don't like really when they sit in about uh, around the 18-yard box mm -hmm. because then they'll put crosses in and then I have to make decisions to come out. It's a uh, – call me a little old-fashioned or call me a little lazy. I'm just trying to get whatever I can out of my team to get a victory. As, uh, Gustafson was off sides on that last play and it's – out of bounds now for Mary Baldwin, uh, college squirrels. But, uh, but yes, high line for me. But, of course, just like every other team, we'll sit in when necessary, just like the girls will sit in when necessary. It's uh, part of soccer. This is Kylie McKean coming up. Does some fancy footwork to get by two squirrels. Gustafson plays a far ball to Barber, unable to hang on to it. This is now Sanchez. Plays it to Yona. Or, excuse me, JoJo. And it's a through ball to Sky Dunn. She thought she was on her own half, wasn't, and is off sides by just two yards from the half line. As you actually watch the game from Varba, you can see how high this line is. Like, yep. Um, you can say we have three fours, I would say. All three of them are literally standing off sides, trying to time it at the same time while – Mary Baldwin isn't, they are not backing up an inch and making us wait to make our runs, but we are trying our hardest. We're walking at the same time and just trying to get everything right right now. We do have a little outbreak using our pace to get up the field. There's a little 2 on 0. Gustin's to the other side. Goalie comes out and tries to parry it. She misses it. We still have the ball in the box. We cross it in and. And we have our first goal of the game scored by Sky Gun. Good break by. Johanna Ornberg got it all the way around the goalkeeper, couldn't finish, so she crossed it right Your in the box number 11, to Sky number 11, Sky Gun, the freshman forward from Delray Beach, Florida. And being a freshman, John, I, I believe I'm looking at the stat. This is her first goal of her career. What a great achievement to have her first goal of career in today's game. Uh, I'm proud of her. Very, very happy to see how she's coming along as a freshman. She's ready to play a little, bit, a little more, and hopefully – she can keep it up, but today that's our first goal of the game. Yep, first collegiate goal is always a special one. Uh, my freshman center back, Jove Hall, was able to score his last Saturday, mm -hmm. and he said it was probably one of the best feelings he's had since he scored his freshman goal in high school. But uh, now Cougars got a one nothing lead. Now let's see if they can add on to it or if they have to protect it. This is Yobsis, gives it over to Gustafson. Sky is just offside by the arm thing about offsides is that even if your arm is past the pl last player, you are considered offsides. That's right. Yeah. These refs won't give you an inch, I'll tell you. As this is going to be number 14 for Mary Baldwin to take the free kick. Kaylee Ann Hymans, freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia. As you look at the roster of Mary Baldwin, a lot of freshmen on the team, John. I wonder um, – mm -hmm. As their record might not show it, how good they are. Maybe they're, just, they're trying to come along, become a team, and uh, get some chemistry together. But with mostly all freshmen on the team, it's hard to get chemistry early in the year. Hopefully not being non-biased, not just an able, but hopefully they get it along and play by themselves. Well, of course, we have a young team as well, and uh, it'll be something, some kind of challenge as you see two youthful teams going at it. Mm -hmm. We, us having no seniors, Mary Baldwin have, having two seniors. So it uh, – it is going to vary to see where the leadership can come in, especially with Mary Baldwin working with such low numbers, looking like they have three subs to work with on the bench. But uh, going back to that high line is Ashley Jones mishits it out of bounds. Um, 
they I think Mary Baldwin did their homework on Avery. They know that uh, our players like Yondo and Felt are just going to clear it up to uh, Gunn and Gustafson or Ornberg, and they know that if they play a high line, they're going to get them offsides. I think we've had three or four offsides calls already against them. So credit to Mary Baldwin for uh, reading the scouting report and understanding the tactics of the Avery Cougars. Is, this is Yondo clearing it up. Settled by Sky Gun, and she's going to run it down herself. She's going to get by all the defenders, and she's one on one with the keeper now. The keeper comes out. Great save by the keeper. That is Brittany 10. The freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia, getting off her line and the bravery coming out and putting her body in front of the ball. And it's great goalkeeping on my on my end. I know you like to see that, but uh. For the Avery side, I like the aggressiveness for uh, mm -hmm. Sky Gun. She got back somebody, took a very long touch. She yeah. used her pace like we saw her earlier. Her pace is very good, so she used a long touch to get out there. And uh, as she was trying to shoot the ball and be aggressive, the goalie came out a little further off her line, like you said she did, and made the good save on the outside shot. It's a good start for uh, Avery and also a good start for uh, Mary Baldwin goalie. She has two or three saves now. I believe it's three to be exact already early in the game. Yep, and she's going to be a key part in this Mary Baldwin defense because if they do get by her, she has to be ready to go. She has all the time in the world to figure out what she's going to do, whether she's going to come out, whether she's going to sit back. But she has handled herself well. She's also a freshman too, John. She, so. is, a, mm -hmm. she is a freshman. And she has, and she's playing like a veteran out there right now, knowing what to do. As uh, Johanna Ornberg gets a throw-in rewarded to her side, and it will be Melissa Sanchez to take it. One of the different things here, as you watch the game, you can see how compact the middle of the field is. Usually you can see a lot of space and how it is, but right now it's so compact because everybody is so high line and the midfielder right, right beside pretty much the back defender. So it's so compact, hard to pass the ball in the middle. You see a lot, I think you see a lot of long balls today more than just playing in the middle. A lot of long balls, and a, lot of, a lot of wide play instead of just playing in the middle because it's so compact. Right, and uh, as we've seen so far, Gustafson and Gunn know how to get um, around the defense and mm -hmm. know how to get through them with their speed. So... Definitely the long balls will come in handy. They just got to be careful on the offsides play. As it looks like the defense is now all the way past the half field line on the Averitt side. You can't be offsides in your own half, folks. So let's see how this pays off for them. So right now there are literally 21 players on one side of the field right now, John. Mm -hmm. 21 players on one side of the field. I remember I saw a picture of a professional game and there were 21 players and like I think like one-fourth or something of the field. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see if that comes into play here. As this is Gustafsson bringing it down into the corner. She'll go one-on-one -on -one with the Baldwin player, but the ref says out of bounds. And it's going to be a goal kick for Mary Baldwin. I believe taking the goal kick would be number six for Mary Baldwin, Bailey McWilliams. Yep. Sometimes the defender has a better foot than the goalkeeper, which I know very well. It looks like the senior back there, Yona Bingman, is doing all the work on defense, cleaning up everything that comes her way. A uh, throw in from Ray Ball on the uh, near side, from number 12. Looking forward to strike number three as it's cleared out by number seven, Redding. And it's going to be a lot of those today as uh, it's going to be Bingman, Bingman, Bingham, excuse me, to make the throw in here for Mary Baldwin. Good throw cleaned up by Gustafson. The Obsis runs into the defender, but Bingman comes away with it. It's going to go down the line to Redden. Redden keeps it in. Makes some fancy footwork move to get around the Fighting Squirrels. And now she'll carry across the center. Tries to play through the gun. Did not work. Intercepted. And now Barry Baldwin is on the attack. All 11 players coming to one side of the field now. Uh, speaking about Redding, John, I remember watching earlier in the year she was actually playing forward. Now she's converted to, uh, I believe, right back now, John. I wonder... Uh, yeah. Is that her normal position, or did she just try four for a couple games? Or 
for whatever it is. She's playing well right there right now. So I'm yeah. glad that, that this, the decision was made, helping the team out a little bit in the defensive side of the field. She got a little speed towards helping out. But here we have a long ball with Amanda seems to be on side here on the right side. They have a three on three. As she's looking, she's probing. Tried to cut middle as a good stab and stole him at number 12 mm -hmm. for Mary Bowen. Johanna Braun. Good cross from McKean as she keeps it. Hits it over to Ornberg now. Ornberg with the shot. Oh. Goal from outside the box. What, what a, oh, you can say what a strike there, John. <laughs> <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth, Dip. Johanna Ornberg receives the ball from McKean at the top of the key and, as you know so well, puts in the bucket. <laughs> and she's not one to shoot from out there, so that is something new. Normally she dribbles up and tries to touch around the goalkeeper, but instead she went over and in. Avery takes a 2-0 lead with 32-14 remaining in the first half. Excuse my terminology here, um, but, uh, John, I'm a big figure player, so... On that one, I would say she um, bent it in there, John, over the goalie's head. Bent it in. <laughs> yeah, you would be right. You would be right. There was a little bend on it. It definitely uh, stumbled up the goalkeeper, Brittany Ten. But uh, props to Yonana Ornberg. That happens to be her second goal of the year there, John. Mm -hmm. I believe she scored in that uh, Southern Virginia battle earlier this year. The 4-3 Heartbreak for Averett earlier this year. And now Johanna's on sides for this one as she looks to add to her tally. She'll get it in, and she will get it kicked away for a Averett University corner. This is where they can be very dangerous if played right. They have the height between Gunn and Ormberg. But it looks like Gunn's actually going to take the corner. Also, Yobsis is very good in the air. Before this first corner here, John, I believe uh, I wasn't here for the Southern Virginia game, but I believe that's maybe a highlight play for Johanna. There is a great strike. Maybe she want to save that one, try to get the video for that one. But uh, Cross comes in by gun, and it finds the head of Barber, and it is shot on the head and deflected out by one of the Mary Baldwin defenders as we will have our second corner of the game as Sky sprints across the field to take the corner on the opposite side this time, John. Yep, it was uh, deflected by number 15, Brenda Santa Maria. Okay, okay. Gunn has a pretty good uh, arc with her uh, cross here, so it gives Averett time to get into the box and make something of a corner. And it's bent in. Oh, my goodness. There, John. And that is called an Olympic goal, folks, when you score a bender from the corner. Nobody touched it. It might have deflected off the keeper, but in the end it uh, – it is a goal awarded to Sky Gun. That is her second of the season and second of the game. Wow, we are seeing some very, we are seeing some not uh, I guess uh, bad goals. We're seeing some impressive benders, some impressive upper nineties. They are out there. They brought their shooting boots today, Deb. Trying to be professional, John. We're not getting too excited, but if I was a fan today, I'd be very happy with our play. Yeah. Some of the shots we're taking today, and especially the last one, you don't see that very often. An Olympic goal, you do not see that one very often there, John. I mean, I'm not sure if the goalie thought it was a cross or <laughs> came off a line a little too much. But, but I dealt with a similar situation when we played Randolph. The kid hit an upper 90 Olympic goal on me. I was absolutely stunned. I actually went and shook his hand after the mm -hmm. game because I'd never seen that happen, especially to me before. This is Sky Gun trying to get behind the defense. Little mix-up between the defender and the goalkeeper as it looks like 10 will just kick it out. And speaking of fans, Dip, it looks like the football team just got out of practice and is supplying a little uh, uh, um, fanatic fun over there behind the goal for Averitt. I'm sure the ref's going to ask them to move if they get two out of line. Great to see um, one of our I the director Meg, she believes in one team. So it's great to see our, our team get out of practice and come support the other teams, especially on home games and we're playing well. And just sometimes even a couple words would be good encouragement to have right. our team play well. Yeah, definitely a 3 nothing lead is definitely a way you want to start a game. As this is Mary Baldwin's number 10, Janelli Ramos, bringing it up, but unfortunately losing it to the freshman, number 12, Heather Miles. 
Also, John, I just say twelve hundred miles. I believe we missed a couple of subs there, John. Uh, yeah, we, we brought in number fourteen, <laughs> Rosa Morales. We brought in number twelve, who you just said, uh, Heather. Um, Heather Miles has played defensive mid, and we also brought in a new winger on the right side, number. I believe sixteen. She has long hair. I try to see her hair, but I <laughs> try to see her long hair. Number sixteen, Nia. Nia Johnson's also came again. She's a sophomore. Yep. Trying to get the freshmen and sophomores in there to get some time as uh, Averett has a 3 nothing lead. And now Rosa Morales is onside. Goalkeeper is just standing there, unable to react. And she sees that. She makes a great cross. And good pickup by Brittany Ten. Say, uh, I thought Ten would come and challenge for that because she has been good coming off her line. It's when she stays on her line that she gets beat. As this is McKean now with the ball. Get out there by, there by 14 Morales as she was trying to cross it over. Because on the other side, we did have two runners on the other side who were open. And um, a little more power, I believe it would be a volley or maybe a hay to go inside the, over the gully. Because she came off her line, so the goal was open. Yep. But not enough power on the cross to get there. Yep, and Rosa has some serious speed when she gets going. Able to get down there. And I think I timed that five seconds from to go from the 40 to the 20 before she touched the ball. Mm -hmm. Goalie was very flat-footed when uh, she had the ball. And, Rose, I thought she would uh, come out, like I said. But uh, I guess she's uh, trying to think of some way to stop this high-intensity Averitt offense coming at her. As Mary Baldwin looks to get their first real attack going here. Yeah. They, they made it to the box here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yana's got a little pressure. She tries to clear it. She clears it out. But it also finds the foot of – foot of, uh, well, almost the foot of an Averitt player as it goes all the way through yeah. the, to the back. And this is now Yobsis has the ball trying to get around. Plays it over to Franks. And Franks has it kicked away, and she'll just recover to play defense. Smart play by her. And it's cleared away by 15. Brenda Santa Maria into the corner. It'll be an Averitt throw in by Melissa Sanchez. Good throw to Franks now as they play a little ticky-tacky play, and it goes out of bounds now. As you and Drew were stating earlier, I um, called the games last week when we were uh, having our rain showers, and the game was a lot slower, John. I mean, <laughs> yeah. players looked tired and dehydrated from the rain, didn't want to go any faster, the ball was in the middle the whole time. But yeah. this is the first time we haven't had any kind of rain in the last at least six days, five I mean, days, almost a full week of rain, and it looks like it's going to pick up again tonight. But it's nice Judging to see. by the yeah. weather. Mm -hmm. Nice to see how soccer's really play. Uh, a little more pace in the game. The ball's moving a little faster, skipping around, ready to go. And this is Nia Thompson looking to make something. As that's the senior, number two, Yona Bingman. Definitely don't want that rain to come back as this week is homecoming week for Averett University Cougars. The men's football team will be taking on LaGrange at 5 o'clock here on Saturday at Daily Field. We hope you tune in for that one on the Averitt Sports Network. I personally will not be here, but I'm hoping others will uh, fill my spot to uh, broadcast this game. Talking about that game there, John, I don't want to be the bringer of bad news, but as you watch the news uh, on ABC 13 or WDJ 7, you see that uh, this area of Virginia is in the way of maybe a hurricane coming yeah. through for the first time in a long time. We used to be Big time hurricanes a couple years in the way, but we haven't had one for like the last five or six years. But yeah. as you look at the news, this one could be could be a bad one, John. Yeah. Hopefully it, it mixes, misses us or it goes the wrong way. But right now we're a little nervous, um, <laughs> especially homecoming weekend. So yeah. many alumni coming in and just have trying to have a good time. But it'll Mother Nature may have a different, different choice. It'll be a homecoming to remember. I'll, I'll know that. And uh, if there's no lightning, then uh, the game will resume because right. football is played in almost any weather. Unfortunately, Lightning is the killer for most sports. As this is Emir looking to set something up, and Nia Thompson comes back to collect the ball from an offside position, and the ref caught her. How many outside calls is that there, John Foz? Do you know? I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it has been a lot. We were talking about the high line. Mary Baldwin has been playing, and it has been working as it has caught Cougars offsides left and right. And this just in, it's going to be seven offsides. Now well, uh, make it eight. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> oh, as Yobsis comes in and pushes the goalkeeper out of the way, didn't know she was offsides, kept the play going on. 
And it's going to be a free kick due to the offside. It's not a foul, luckily for Yobsis. You've got to be careful after the play there because that can get you even more trouble than during the play. And this is Sanchez bringing it up for the Cougars. Sanchez trying to move forward here. She yep. away from her, from her position, but it's okay with me. I like to aggressive as Franks is trying to chase the ball down, and the ref <laughs> will raise his flag again, John. Make that all size call number nine. nine. <laughs> nine. <laughs> you know, we could break a record for most offsides called in a game today. Get some recognition. Nine offsides already. And we're only uh, 20 minutes in. Speaking of uh, the team support, John, I mean, the football team is also here. But uh, as we look down at first, there wasn't many people here because it was just the middle of the day and people have classes and stuff. But I'm yeah. guessing now we're looking in, we got the men's soccer coach and soccer team coming through. Uh, some of my fellow teammates and the men's basketball team has came through to watch the, watch the game. So... It's always nice to just see out here and just enjoy the Avery Cougar family here at uh, Daily Field today. Make it 10 offsides as Nia Thompson <laughs> tacks on another one. As a coach, do you start to get frustrated with this, these offsides calls? I mean, I know we got three goals and all, and we're playing well today, but as a coach, <laughs> it may, it may well, get to you and just try to tell your team just to stay on sides, please. Well, I was looking at Sarah Chapman's reaction on that last offside. She was talking to the newly coming on player, Lauren Cowling, who's looking to make her first uh, appearance as a Cougar. But, um, yeah, she's uh, she's fine with three goals right now, and uh, she hasn't really complained about the offsides. I'm sure she'll make a point of it in the, in the halftime speech. But uh, right now her team is cruising. It looks like another girl is going to come on for the first time this season. Number 26, Ariana Ventura. As Ariana Ventura and Lauren Callen make their first starts or first uh, appearances in a Cougar jersey this year. And we have a break here. It's, it's Lauren Cowling chasing down the center back of Mary Baldwin, looking to make something. Looking down on the far side of our goalie there, John. It looks like she's trying to stay a little loose as she's yeah. stretching out and even her legs loose just in case one of these times. As we keep trying to attack, I don't want to say anything. Hopefully, we don't get counterattacked, John. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it is, I mean, the goalie position can vary. Sometimes you get a barrage of shots <laughs> at you. The next day, you're standing in the box waiting for a shot. So uh, it is one of those uh, type of games for uh, Ashley Jones, and uh, she is just trying to stay uh, stay loose right now. Fortunately, you can't see it in the camera. As we look down here, John, it looks like we have another sub coming in, in a little while. As Avery continues to make subs, but as I'm talking right now, this happens to be our 11th <laughs> offside call, John. Uh, 11 already in the first half, and we're just uh, 30 minutes into the game. Not 30, sorry about that. 25 minutes into the first half. Yep. And this is going to be Pippa Burge, a very well known forward, has come in when needed. That is Nania Ventura going in for the ball and getting tripped. First foul of the game there, John, for, uh, Aver, I mean, for Mary Baldwin as we have our first free kick for Avert. And the uh, <laughs> all-known captain comes up to take it, Ashley Yondo. I have seen her try and put this in the goal from this far range here, John. Let's she may see. cross it here, <laughs> but I have seen her try this. Let's see what she does here. It's a good shot in right at the goalie. Easily collected by 10. 10 with a big throw there. 
to the 35. And we're going to have a throw in here. But first we're going to have our third or fourth, fifth, sixth sub of the game. As Pippa Burge mm -hmm. coming in from Melissa Sanchez. And Rosa Morales is going to move the left back. So that is Redding there. Hard collision from Yondo by number three of Mary Baldwin. Jamalet Cordon. As Yondo has moved forward and she tried to make the through pass to uh, a sub that just came in, Lauren Cowan, but she was also outsides. Uh, 11 plus 1 equals 12. John is 12 plus <laughs> in the first half, outsides wise. Yeah. On that one, John, uh, if you look down, you see uh, Coach was Chapman watching. was looking upstairs and trying to see. She thought she was on side on that one, John. I believe she uh, wanted to get a confirmation from my, her camera crew upstairs <laughs> to see, make sure the ref made the right call because that one was close. It that was, it was. I mean, and they definitely want to get Cowling on the scoring side, definitely boost her confidence as scoring will do that. This is Morales just kick it out of bounds if you marry Baldwin's throw. Camera crew. Going to challenge it? <laughs> Are they challenging the soccer? No, no. no, no. Is it, they, they they just got goal line technology. Let's not <laughs> not in not in D three uh, soccer. This is Nia Thompson. Now she's on side. She can make something here. She's breaking. Followed closely by the uh, center back. Senior Break center back does a great move. Centers it to Nia Ventura, who just goes for a rip and nearly takes out the Mary Baldwin player. No foul. No. Uh, no foul or contact at all, and it'll go forward for an Aver throw. She was looking to rip that one from a long oh, ways yeah. out here, John. <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> she wanted that one. This is Emer still playing hard. Emer gets the step in taken away by the squirrels. And it's played up and off the head of Heather Miles. There's Emer to play it down the field to Thompson. She's on sides now. She has four Cougars in the middle and only one squirrel. Nia plays it across, hits a squirrel, goes, stays in bounds, and Nia will get her own ball. Yeah, this is going to be number 15, or excuse me, number 12, Yona Brand to bring it up for the squirrels. And now Miles will take it for the Cougars and just hit it off to Morales. Gives it over to Franks now. Franks sees Morales running and now has her. And they had a Four on one? A four on one. That high line can be costly if uh, they get by you. I believe there, John, uh, as Morales comes down the side for a back position, I believe she just wanted to make the right pass mm -hmm. so fast that she just didn't recognize she had all <laughs> the time in the world just to make another touch, a couple touches, and then make the pass. But the idea was right, just the execution a little lost there. Yep. As that's 10 with a good pawn after you're collecting the cross. And it's going to be Emer to make the throw. And it's down to Thompson now. <laughs> Unable to keep it in. Goes out for a Mary Baldwin throw. Now off the head of Bran. And uh, it will be a Cougar throw now for Redden. Redden down the line to Pippa Burge. Getting her first touches on the ball. Does a great move around and will keep it in. She looks for the low cross to Cowling, unable to find it. As Heather Miles got the yeah. rebound and took a – it looked kind of a slow left rolling shot, but the, it was actually on target as yeah. it was a little off to the wrong side. She had to hustle and get there, John. Mm -hmm. You can't be too casual when playing that position because you don't know what's on target and what's not. It's just Morales with a, another great touch, another long touch now. Has two Cougars in the middle. Tries to play it across, and it's just kicked out of bounds by Mary Baldwin's number 13. This will be Mary Baldwin's first sub of the game as a uh, freshman Jessica Ward out of uh, Hampton, Virginia, looking and checking the game, waiting for the referee's call. But 
She won't be a chicken until after this corner here, John. But uh, this is, uh, uh, as we were saying earlier, Mary Ball only has three subs available <laughs> on the team. So, uh, oh, what a header. That was Yonda with the header. Not far off target there, but the goalkeeper with a great save. This is Morales now. Gets tied up with Franks and a Baldwin player. And Franks will just play it back to Yondo. Morales looking for something to open up. Gives it to Miles in the center of the pitch. Miles hits it up. A bouncer to Nia. Here's a first serve for um, Mary Baldwin. Is it? Sell for the striker, John. Yep. Seven comes in for number three. Number three is uh, Jamiliet Corndon, a sophomore out of Maryland. Just comes off for the first serve for uh, Mary Bowen today. Mm -hmm. This is Nania. Wins a throw in by Emer. Emer Redden with the throw to Pippa Burge. Looks to play Johnson down the line. Doesn't get it. Over, over the top pass from the back. Nadia. Uh, oh, it bounced up and hit her on the elbow. Handball going the other way. Having a chance for her first goal career, John. I know she's a little upset yeah. about the unluckiness of uh, mm -hmm. the bounce there, John. She was out ready to go, <laughs> but the ball bounced a little bit higher than normal and – that was her first chance, well, maybe not her first chance, but first chance today for her first career goal as it happened today. A handball for Averitt. Yep. Nani Ventura looking for her first goal as an Averitt Cougar. Unable to as she's called for handling. And this is now Miles met with Ventura. Ventura heads it up, and it goes right out of bounds. It'll be a Mary Baldwin throw. This is a good step by Johnson, unable to keep it in. Watching Johnson run the um, pitch here, John. I believe she's one of the more faster people on our team, John. And this is now Franks has an opportunity, takes a hit, goes off the Baldwin player, and she will stay with it, unable to corral it, but it will go out of bounds after a clearance from Mary Baldwin. As she took that shot there, John, I believe it was at least 35 yards out. John. Mm -hmm. She was trying to rip that one. Yeah, I mean, she saw Ornberg do it, so she's like, why can't I? Now Franks has it again. She'll put it in the box for uh, Pippa Burge. And Burge will get pushed down, no call. As this is Bingham looking to place uh, short. That is Linia Meyer with the Forwarding pass to Johnson. Johnson offsides there, and it'll go back to Mary Baldwin. Just to keep the, our watchers on notice, that's 13 for the half, John. <laughs> it is a high offsides game right now as Mary Baldwin still holding their high line. Only got beaten three times on it. And in their defense, only one was a corner. This is a short pass back to the goalkeeper. Good clearance out. Plays it to 15, Santa Maria. And it's stolen away by Johnson. Johnson has a clean break on the goalie. She'll take the shot, oh. and that's a great shot, but an even better save by 10. Now Callen comes away with the ball. That was also Johnson's first chance. Plays it over to goal. Franks now, who has an opportunity. She'll shoot. And it's hit and saved away by 10. Now Johnson will put it in. Looks like it hit her hand. No call, says the referees. And it will be cleared out for an Avery to throw. Great, great passage of play as uh, some of the Cougars are looking for their first goals on the season. That's this is a good a throw to up to you, Yondo. You're right, Dip. Johnson now gives it over to Burge. Burge with some fancy footwork. Unable to get around as now Mary Baldwin's looking to break. Played in the center, cleaned up by the defensive mid, Miles. Looking around, 
Plays it across to Morales. Good ball by Miles. And Morales will find Franks, and Franks is in. She's got speed, met with Cowling. And she looks for the shot or the cross. Regardless, it's uh, going to be off a of Mary Baldwin player, going to be uh, Averett Corner, and Franks will take it herself. Two more stuff. So, uh, Mary Baldwin looking to check in the game as we had them before. Taylor Foreman and number one, Dalana Alvarez. I was also trying to check in the game. Corner for Avery is whipped in, and it is over the goalie's head as she tried to catch it and finds all the way over to Johnson, over to 17 Cowlin. She has a shot. Oh. That was, I believe that was a shot into a shot, John. Not a cross to a shot, but yeah. that was a shot into a shot there, John. Yep, and that was uh, Nani Ventura going in hard looking for a goal, and she collides with the goalkeeper, but the goalie got a touch on it, so it'll be Avery cornering yet again. I believe that's Frank's taking the corner in there, John. Yep, and she's got a good arc just like her teammate Sky Gunn. As the clock ticks down to the last uh, seven minutes of the first half, overview, Avery's playing well. We have three goals, three early goals, actually. We haven't done anything lately, but uh, we have opportunities. We finally get regrouped from all these all-size calls. We're trying to get, do better with our time of our runs, and some of our first-time players, first-time freshmen and sophomores are coming in looking to be very aggressive for their first goals of their career. Very happy to see. Very nice to see it. Sometimes, as we find Yondu again on the corner. We find Yondu again for another <laughs> header to the goal if she saves it again. Yep, and Nani Van Ter looking to clean it up, but the goalie, Brittany Ten, was there to hang on tight. As yeah, Morales trying to corral it. And it's going to be Cowling with a dangerous side tackle, but it stays Avery Ball. No foul called as Morales runs up now. Passes it back to Cowling. Cowling a little tripped up by the turf there. Put in by Morales. Swept away by 15 Santa Maria for Mary Baldwin. It's going to be played up. Received by Morales. And Morales plays it down the line. That's staying in. And Cowling looking to get around. Falls again off the tip of the ball. And now Miles will just slow it down and pass it across to Redden. Almost intercepted there by Brand. And there's Redden. And there's Redden. With the pass, and they're saying that Nani Ventura was off sides, even though Pippa Burge made the overlap around her. The one who received it was on sides. The one who did not was off sides. But regardless, once the flag goes up, He's going to call the offsides because they're going to consider her part of the play. That's the rule. Even if you don't touch the ball, you're still part of the play, so you got to be careful. I don't know about that one there, John. <laughs> I, mean, I, know, it's, it's, I know the rules, but uh, whew. it's complicated, Dip. It's complicated. As you listen to our fans below, they are, they yeah, were very they heated about that one. They're right now. <laughs> and there's Redding looking to clear it up. The problem there was, I mean, I'm not sure if he actually saw how we were trying to play out. We had a decoy that was kind of about two yards off sides that we had done a loop run for um, loop run for other runner who was on sides who actually received the ball, but he still raised the flag there. Another off sides call, John. It's 14 and 15 favorite this half. Yep. Well, at least it's good to know the, the ref is uh, doing a great job watching it. He hasn't gotten to... Uh you know, bored with the game. You know, he's still into it, still watching the offsides calls. Great attacking play by Averett, being very aggressive. Unable to get anything from it as we tick down under five minutes here. First foul for Averett of the game is on, uh, I believe, 26-90. Ventura for a first foul on number... Number six will take the uh, free kick from about the 34-yard line, 44 yards for the soccer field, 34 football field. Yep, and that's Bailey McWilliams, and it's headed by Linnea Meyer, but it's in the safe arms of Ashley Jones. And she'll play it easy to Yondo. Up to have the miles as she controls in the middle. She finds 90 in the middle also. Up to Berg. Pippa Bird makes the move. Through ball up to Nia Johnson. She's in a race with two Bingham, and Bingham will get there first as she makes a move off of Nia 
Johnson's foot and a throw in for Ray Baldwin. It's finally the two subs that have been waiting for a long time, John, yes, into the game. Have. Number one checking into the game, Daliana Alvarez, and number four, Taylor Foreman. Coming in for number 12, uh, Johanna Braun, and 14, Kalyan Hemmins. That's headed away by Pippa Burge. Excuse me, 12 stood in the game. Came in for number two, Bingham, the senior mm. on the team. And Throw in finds Johnson. Johnson staying with it now. Plays it off to Cowling. Kind of a little shove there. Johnson still on the ground. Referee was about to blow the whistle. Just wave and play on as Franks now will take it down the line. She has Pippa to the middle with her. She tries to find Pippa Berg. She and will find Pippa Burge. Berg. And there comes the Coley, Brittany 10, to come out and make the save. Slide and save there, John. Good yeah. save. And also good sportsmanship as she also tried yep. to help up Pippa Berg, who had fell over on uh, the cross there. Yep. This is Morales back to Franks now. Morales will play Cowling. But uh, she was unable to get it as number six, Bailey McWilliams, clears it out for an Avert throw. Morales plays it over to Cowling. Good header down the line to Franks. Franks looking for a cross. Always and through. no one's home. As this is going to be Heather Miles now. Puts it back into Nani Ventura. A little give and go there. Trying to find Heather Miles also. She is unable to keep it in balance. It was very close there on the near side of the field. Miles chasing after her as fast as she could. Just couldn't keep it in. Almost inches away from keeping it in. This is Ventura to kick it down the field. And here's Bingman. Johnson comes away with it. Kicks it up. And now Cowling's there to receive it. And is pushed hard by Alvarez. Kyle's one of the more smaller players on that team, John. As the ball's in the air, she thought about jumping the head, but she thought things over to let it down down. But she battles for her size. I appreciate it because me being myself on the basketball court, I'm actually uh, five foot five for all the fans <laughs> up there, so it's hard for me to play basketball. But I yeah. battle the same way, so I'm proud to see how she does the same thing. Well, you pull off some miracles that I never thought you could, honestly. <laughs> Thanks, there, John. I appreciate it. I'm gonna see you dunk. I promise. <laughs> As this is now Redden. Give the throw off the Baldwin player, but they're saying a hit off Johnson, so it's going to come back for Mary Baldwin. As we are almost under a minute here. If they possess the ball on the other side, 12 makes a good move. 12 is moving down the field as she's been challenged by Heather as she makes a good move, handles the ball, tries to find her team number one who just checked in the game. One minute remaining. Misplay as it goes to Yondo as Yondo will clear out of bounds for there and it'll throw in for Mary Baldwin. <laughs> we have two balls on the field here, John, as yep. the ref stops to play. That is the rookie ball boy. Not paying attention. Rookie ball boy is one of our players on your team, John. It's yep. Nice <laughs> to see him out here trying to help us out. It just, I know you understand the game of soccer, just a little. <laughs> no, it's a little eager. No names to say, though. Just nope, nope. Just uh, impressive move there by 12. She splits two defenders there. As he tries to find uh, number 11 on, all side, uh, on the other side of the field, but it gets kicked out by Avery for a throw in. As the clock takes down to the final 20 seconds of the first half, Avery leading the game 3 0 here. Ten, nine, eight, Yondo seven, to just boot it out six, here. Five, and four, it looks like three, that's how three, the half is going to end one, after a clearance from zero. Nani Ventura. <laughs> And the half ends with Averett on top, 3 nothing. A lot to talk about come halftime. We're going to have live stats for you, and we're going to talk about some of these offsides calls and talk about how close Averett has been. But right now the score remains 3 nothing. We will be right back.
Welcome back to the Averitt Sports Network. I'm John Matriciano, joined by uh, the new broadcaster, Dip Pinnell. And we are just under uh, three minutes here before the start of the second half. But looking at some stats here, a load of stats for Averitt. Not a lot of stats for uh, Mary Baldwin in terms of uh, offensive, but definitely a lot of defensive stats here as uh, we look over here um, at the score. 3 nothing is your score at the half. Averitt up. And uh, the shots is something of a keynote to talk about for Averett. 15 total shots for Averett with none by Mary Baldwin. Uh, no shots by Mary Baldwin in the first half dip. Yeah, I mean, um, they had one opportunity earlier where they tried to uh, cross in. It fell on the head of somebody, but it wasn't really considered a shot. But most of the possession was on our side of the field first half. I mean, with a little... Faster, we got more uh, chances. Should have been more shots, depending on all the calls we had. But uh, starting out well, taking shots to Goldie, making her making her play today. Goldie's playing well, but she's making her play today. She also has a uh, nine saves by the uh, Goldie from Mary Ball. What do you think about that, John? That is impressive. Brittany Ten uh, stopping a barrage of shots, uh, twelve shots on target, and uh, nine saves. So I believe that is the correct math. If there are three goals, so uh, definitely something notable for Averett. Um, is uh, the amount of shots they have done, shutting them out by shots. Also, six corner kicks for Averett with none for Mary Baldwin. And the fouls have been neck and neck. Three fouls for Averett, two for Mary Baldwin. Not really a physical battle out there, no, no. Dip. More of just possession, technicality, and speed right now as Averett looks to close out this game quickly uh, in the second half. Giving a couple more props to the Mary Baldwin goalie, uh, a couple of her saves have been uh, all out saves, John. She's been laying out side left. Uh, one of the headers by uh, Yana on the corner where she laid out on the, uh, the near side to save one. Remember one that uh, a fast break by Nia. Yep. Nia Johnson on the right side. She laid out for that one also. So she's been playing well. She's been pairing them, catching them, clearing out very well. A couple got by her on back accident, but she's been playing well. Proud of her game to be a freshman also, John. Yep, the rookie goalkeeper sh coming up big. Uh, Definitely keeping her team in the game. 3 nothing. a very deciding score, as most soccer fans would think, but I've seen them come back from more. As uh, we are just under a minute here before the start of the second half, it looks like uh, Coach uh, Chandler is going to come out with um, her uh, starting lineup, as she did. Excuse me, Coach Chapman coming out with her starting lineup, as she did in the first half. Uh, going to give the starters some chances to get on the board along with uh, looks like she's going to take out some of her defense as well to give her a break because it looks like Yondo played the full 45 in the first half. So 15 shots, 12 on target, 3 goals and 2 assists. 1 by McKean and 1 by Orenberg as we have 2 goals scored by Sky Gun and 1 by Yona, Yona, Johanna Orenberg and the third one is uh, marked down as an own goal. And the clock hits zero. Going to do a fresh 45 on the clock here. As we get ready for the second half, huddled on the left is Averitt, and huddled on the right is Mary Baldwin. We will be switching sides. Going from right to left on your screen will be Averitt, and vice versa for Mary Baldwin now. Speaking of uh, Coach Chapman, this is her rookie year, first time coaching, and she has her first lead at half, 3 0. It looks like she. I don't want to be a foreshadow or jinx our team. I just I'm very confident here with the women's soccer team. So I always say that Chapman's on her first a road to her first career win here at Avery University. Uh, John um, has to be a special day for her to get her first career win as a coach. She was a player in college, and now she's coaching the same sport. She has a good opportunity to get her first career win here, Avery. Yep, on her way to her first victory, like you said, the rookie coach went to played at uh, FSU or excuse me UF University of Florida Gators. Rumor is she actually knew Wombeck. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's what I heard, that she played against or with Wombeck for uh, um, a season, I believe. People who don't know about Abby Wombeck, yeah. Wombeck's one of maybe one or two, depending if you're a Mia Hamm fan. <laughs> I like Mia Hamm, but Wombeck in my generation was the best strike mm -hmm. of all time for women's soccer. It's just a rumor, though. Oh, just okay, remember, okay. we don't have facts yet. Yeah, we got to talk to her about that. That's, gotta, that's wait for the, gotta wait for the guys <laughs> upstairs to get that one down to us. But uh, right now, uh, like we said, Coach Chapman on her way to her first victory as a head coach in this fine establishment we call Averett University. 
And it looks like we're all set. Sky Gun comes back in along with Annalise Jobis. Or excuse me, Yobsis. Caitlin Barber, Amanda Gustafson, and jo Yona, Johanna, Johanna Ornberg. Kylie McKean back there, and it looks like Linnea Meyer getting her first start in the half. But otherwise, the starting lineup is the same. Also, Morales on the right back now. And Mary Baldwin's going to attack quickly. And it goes straight out of bounds already for a neighbor goal, ki goal kick her early. Ashley Jones not really having to do a lot of work on the goalkeeping side. Looking to get her first shutout of the season. Also, her first win, John, as a starting goalie. I mean, she's a uh, – she, her third career start this year. She is a uh, sophomore goalkeeper, but she didn't get much playing time last year because we had a, a upper class in the goal. So, this would also be her first career win as a goalie also, John. Yep. She uh, – uh, Everett women's soccer team has been plagued by injuries in the goalkeeping spot, along with the men's soccer goal, uh, goalkeeping situation. Only one goalkeeper remains in that one. I'm not going to leave him nameless. But um, the, they actually share a goalkeeper coach named uh, her first year, Ashlyn Hardy. Went to school at Wingate, Division Two, National tournament appearances all four years. And she actually takes the blame for injuring everyone. And we're going to have... Sky Gun with the chase here on sides. Gets around. She has an open net now and slots it for the fourth goal of this one. Brittany 10 came off her line to try and get the ball, but unable to walk away with the save. Is that is Sky Gun's third goal? She now has, or excuse me, second goal because the third goal is considered an own goal off of Sky Goal's foot, though. So that's her second goal as a Cougar. Second goal of the game. Now she'll be looking for a hat trick now. And this will probably, I would think, get her confidence up for the season ahead. Which is very needed, John. I mean, we have, as I've been watching the games this year, we have a lot of opportunities for our strikers in front of goalies. They're taking really good shots. Just a little off, not a little off to the left, a little too high, a little being parred by the goalie, saved by the goalie. Just I've been seeing that. Let's put our heads down a little bit, John. I, our body language has been down, so hopefully this can get our body language up and ready to play a little better for our strikers. As Yops just chases the ball down and almost gets there as one gets the ball in first from Ray Baldwin. And that is uh, number one on the ball, Del Delana Alvarez. And, and this is now Gustafson ball. with the ball. Has an open net. She'll take the shot and slot it. It is now 5 nothing Averitt. So within three minutes, Averitt, has two goals in the second half, one by Gustafson, one by Gunn. And already it looks like Averitt's starting to run away with this one. The last one was a really good assist by Melissa Sanchez yeah. in the back, a really good through ball. I didn't see her myself from up <laughs> here. That was a good eye to find uh, cutting Gallison from the other side of the field into a one-on-one -on -one situation of goalie, and she pissed it away. Yep. Now Mary Baldwin looking to... Try and turn this one around quickly as Ornberg quickly comes away with it. She'll dribble through two squirrels, and she'll go down the line. Has a little chip and hey, in. Ties the back of the net, John. That's her second goal of the season and her second goal of the game. As her third say, goal, third goal of the season, second of the game. As you stated earlier, she just doesn't take shots from the bottom. No, of she today. doesn't. She is very. Confident in her left yep. foot, John. Her left foot's amazing. She's bending it to the outside and getting it right by the goalie's fingers to find the back of the net. The first one was really amazing from about, I'd say, 20, 22 yards outside and open upper 90. As we state for basketball terms, say upper 90 to make it sound good. Basketball terms. <laughs> I don't know that sport. Uh, six nothing here as Avery takes a commanding lead still. And it looks like they're not done. This is where goal differential is going to come into play when it comes to conference standings. As we have a Mary Bowen uh, player down number one, Delana Alvarez, it looks like. It's down. She was challenged by our center back number two, Cassidy uh, Felt, just now. Maybe a little cleat got to the ankle or to the shin, hoping she's okay. We're taking our time. We have a little time out on the field here. Yep. As we're attending down to our um, – Number one here. Hopefully she's okay. She's okay. 
Yeah. Also, uh, Mary Bowen doesn't have many players, so hopefully it doesn't mess anything up. Nope. Only three players to work with on the bench, one being the goalkeeper. Has been a little difficult here for Mary Baldwin to play coming into the very, very uh, hostile uh, environment that is Daly Field. When our fans get going, they get going. And 6 nothing. our fans are all wild up right now. Just like last half down, we started with three quick goals. This was even quicker, though. We had yeah. three goals in the first night, even three minutes after nope. the second half. But hopefully we can keep it up. I mean, I'm not one of the guys that like to run the squad, but I just want to see our girls keep playing ball and just – have a good time and enjoy stuff and just ready to play for more games. Not, not necessarily to burn the score and be mean about it, just to just play a little team game and uh, just keep working together. I see a lot of smiles down on the field. It's just nice to see the women happy, smiling, talking, waving, just having a good time sometimes. We know we haven't had our win yet yeah. this year, so this can get us started. Hopefully we can keep going. And they are a very promising team, the young lady Cougars, having no seniors and – this is going to be one of their good performances that they're going to turn back on in case anything goes wrong. But 6 nothing right now within three minutes of the second half. And now let's see. Do you keep piling on more goals? I think you do for differential. But at the same time, you want the game to end sometime. Back to the injury, uh, Don. Delana Alvarez is able to give and walk her own self. She's... Seems okay. She's laughing with that train. Talking to her now. She seems okay, which is also always a great sign. No one's seen anybody get hurt out here today. Yep, and that's Jones. Uh, the drop ball procedure, when you drop the ball and your player goes down and the other person has possession, however, uh, is still out there. Looks like she's got the wind knocked out of her. Felt is known to do that. Has hurt other people in the past. One of our more physical players on the team. Yes, her and Riley Smith. Very Riley much. Smith is not playing today. She has an injury, so mm -hmm. felt it takes over the physicality of the game today for us. Could pass it by four, looking from a seven. Mm -hmm. Ball, one Meyer with a good cut. Uh -huh. Here's Ornberg. Gives it over to the McKean now. Drops it to Barber. Four pass uh, through ball number three from Mary Ball and almost makes it as it gets tipped and cleared out by Ashley Jones. Yep. And Jones will clear it out for a Mary Baldwin throw now. Felt makes the interception off the throw off. Find, looks for the opposite, doesn't make it, but finds McLean in the back. And she battles a little bit. 15 takes a shot, John. And Jones will just settle with her feet. And she'll hold it. Close call there. She almost hit it right back to the forward of Mary Baldwin. And it's put back in for Jones. Jones will throw it out to Morales now. Jones getting a little more action here in the second half. John, as she makes two saves already this first half. Mm -hmm. Averitt's definitely taking their foot off the gas pedal here. Being up 6 nothing, Just moving the ball the best they can. <laughs> a little misconfusion there. And it's headed by... Almost intercepted by Omberg there. Yep. As four has the ball again. Four is being very active here in the second half. <laughs> She's looking for the three again. Four is uh, Taylor Foreman, the freshman out of Newport News, Virginia. And this is McKean now. Plays it off to Orenberg. Back to McKean. Little triangle Up. play there, John. <laughs> Up to Barber. Barber makes a move. And Ooh, great move. I don't want to say what happened, but you say it for me. Through the legs. This is McKean over to Gustafson. Back to back. McLean. And back over to Gustafson, who loses it. Track back now, and Morales comes away with it. Passes it forward to uh, Scott Gunn, who's moved from the middle to the right side now. She makes a good move, looking for Yopsis in the middle. Didn't get there, and by number six, Bailey McWilliams. Passes all the way back to the goalie for a resettle and reset for Mary Baldwin as we move into the below 40 minutes in the second half. Almost thought we wouldn't get there. 
Which is a good thing, John. Yeah, we absolutely. For a second With all half. the scoring going on, and Barber plays it over to Ornberg, who is on sides. Ornberg looking for something to open up, but just play it back safely to Felt, and now everyone will step up. Oh, and a hard hit by number seven. The freshman, Jessica Ward. This is Gustafson now. Plays over to Morales. And Morales will just take it up the line. Seems that Avery's trying to possess the ball a little bit more and trying to get our passes to get together. A little bit in the midfield, we've been a little challenged between because the lines are so deep up, so it's hard to look challenge to pass in between. We're trying to pass the ball in the middle of the possession game here. <laughs> This is Felt now. Plays it outside to Morales. That's twice number seven. Number, and Felt has gotten into it a little bit there. It's, I don't know what happened there, John, but. Um, oh, it looks like. Uh, it's number seven, Jessica Ward. I'm not really sure. I mean, she was I, running uh, straight, yeah. John. And I think she might have hit the poster. Maybe tripped on the way off the turf because it, there is a step there they yeah, got to be careful of. She's holding her right knee. I hope it's nothing serious, John. Yeah, we that means she's not today. she's not as uh, moving as Alvarez was when she went down. But you got to be careful when going off the turf because you change uh, texture and it gets weird on the cleat, so it can roll your ankle or something. Or we'll see what uh, is wrong. But right now we have another stoppage of play here. And uh, talk a little bit about upcoming games for the Cougars here. It looks like this uh, upcoming week, like we said earlier, it's going to be homecoming week. Avery taking on LaGrange, the men's football team, and uh, USA South Conference matchup here at Daily Field at 5 o'clock. We will have live coverage for you for that. Um, men's soccer and women's soccer travel together down to Greensboro to play the first game on the brand new Greensboro turf that they just installed uh, this week. So that'll be uh, some important conference and key matches for women's soccer and men's soccer. Looking to looking to better their run in the USA South Conference. It'll also be a men's football first conference game of the year. Uh, men's football have been a tough road here in the first couple of three games playing these ODAC teams. A little tough competition. Get us ready for our conference. Hopefully we can use the uh, tough non-conference schedule for us to Come out strong in the USA South. We had our first home get, her first home opener and USA South Conference opener against the Grange that you stated earlier mm -hmm. on Saturday at 5 o'clock. Well, the football team coming off a tough loss to Guilford College. We know that their quarterback is being looked at the Division Three version of the Heisman this year. So uh, that was definitely a tough loss to take. They ran with Guilford for, in the first half, mm -hmm. um, uh, only it being a two-touchdown game. Uh, by the end of the second half, by the end of the first half, uh, and it was a close one. And it looks like number seven, uh, Bailey McWilliams, has came all the way from the far side with a little bit of help from the trainer. She had a little limp, but seems okay, John. Just a little limp, maybe a little pain in the right side of her leg. I'm not sure if it's a knee or ankle, but she's made it off the field. She seems okay. She's being looked at now as the game is looking to get back get going here. We at the 38-minute 30 minute mark of the second half. Yep. Here we go. And it's going to be Meyer to reset with it. Over to Barber now. Barber carries up for the Cougars. And she'll play down the line, intercepted by looks like Santa Maria over there. Avery made some subs also in the uh, injury as Nia Johnson has re-entered and number 17, Cowling, yep. has also re-entered. Laura Cowling, one of the other, uh, another uh, international player from Teddington, England. Mm. We do get a lot of international folks here as we are well known for it at Averett. And uh, they always do make their mark when they are here. Especially going back uh, to my freshman year, John, when I first got here uh, working with uh, Avery Game Day staff, we used to come to watch the women play. The whole team were uh, little international players, but that team was a very, 
Very good team in Avery history. They actually yep. pulled out and won the uh, USA South Conference. They went to the second round, I believe, of the NCAA tournament against Frostburg State, I believe. We lost to Frostburg State at Lincoln <laughs> College three years ago. Sorry, excuse me, it was the first round. As came from upstairs, I was a little off there. <laughs> that was an uh, impressive run by the girls' team that year. And uh, 2013, they also ended up winning the conference as well. Mm hmm our sophomore years, I believe. And uh, looking here now, it looks like Averitt has a chance to send Laura Cowling down the line now. She's met quickly by the left back, but she's getting there. Gets all the way down to about the 10-yard line, plays it back smartly to Franks, who puts it into Yopsis. Heads it over for Pippa Burge, but the keeper is quick off her line, 10 out there to collect it. But, yeah, this uh, definitely Sarah Chapman has picked up a women's team with great success in the past. Now can she just build off of it after a rough season last year? And this is Meyer to play it to Morales. Kind of slow play now for the Cougars as they're just moving the ball around, trying to keep it away from the Squirrels. This is Franks now. Plays it up to Cowling. Cowling has it intercepted by a squirrel. And this is going to be Franks over to Yobsis. Yobsis all the way over Yobsis to Yobsis plays it to Johnson. Johnson's onside, takes an unfortunate touch to the right. But she's able to corral it, met by the senior Bingham. And Bingham comes away with it. Very veteran play by her. But Johnson stays with it now, and she'll come away with it down the line. Looking for Sun to open up. We'll just play it back to Barbara to be safe. And Barbara with a <laughs> fancy footwork move to get around there. And Barbara played across to Callan. Callan with a good touch in. Being pushed off the ball. And the ref gives the, the Cougars the advantage here. As this is Yobsis in the corner. Makes a good move. She crosses it in. Gets it all the way to Barbara. Barbara settles it. Took a big bounce on her, though. And Meyer jumping, unable to get the, her full head on the ball. As Felt can crowds it, plays it back to Jones. And Jones will just slide it over to Morales, who's wide open. Oh, and McLean back to Morales. Look, give and go there by our right back in defensive mid. Mm -hmm. This is Franks now. Has it intercepted. But well, Barber comes and cleans it up for the Cougars. Plays it back to Morales. The sub that came in for uh, the injury, uh, the Delana Alvarez, number 13, Bethany Rustasilly. The description for her, John, she's a midfielder and a goalie. John, what do you <laughs> think about that there? She plays in the midfield and she plays the goalie position. That's a little <laughs> talent there, I believe. <laughs> you get some of those sometimes. Sometimes some midfield, some field players will try and step up as goalie. But when they get there, they realize it's not as easy as they thought it was. Uh, this is a throw from Franks to Cowling. Cowling will take it down the line and into the box. Played over to 10. 10 with a pass across to her left back, and it's intercepted by Johnson, but Bingham's there to clean it up. Bingham and Johnson have been fighting hard all game. This will be Bingham with the throw now. High arcing throw. Finds Philip Barber is intercepted by Mary Baldwin as he tried to push it forward. And now Fellows on the ball, number two, our center back for Aver. As she tries to pass it forward, gets deflected by 13. The sub, Bethany, just came in the game. All the way back to the goalie as Ashley Jones clears it up to his 17, Lauren Cowling. Aver, that's Frank's pass it. Back to Cowling, a little physical play there, but it goes off of uh, Mary Baldwin foot foot throw in for Franks. That's going to be Yobsis now. Plays it across, intercepted by Santa Maria. Or now it's Burge who comes away with it and plays it over to Morales. Morales plays it up to Johnson. Johnson met by Bingham yet again. A good little tussle between yep. the two for the whole game, uh, John. For us, is uh, number 15, I believe. Nia Johnson and number two, Bingham for them, are playing very physical on the right side of the field for both the first and second half. As we have an injury, I believe. It's now 
Yes. Number four for Mary Baldwin. Has a cramp on his side, John. She's holding his side. She has a cramp there. Taylor Foreman, yeah. And with this heat, you have to be careful. You have to stay hydrated or else you will cramp up really easily as Alvarez comes back in for Foreman. Them side cramps are very hard to deal with, especially when you got to run in sport. Uh, I run cross country all sport for the school. When they, Oof. If you get a side cramp and you got a five mile race, John, I mean, there's not much you can do about it. No, no. <laughs> you ever got a foot cramp? Uh, that's back to high school days. I used to play a lot. I got a couple of foot cramps in the bed at night. That was so yes. funny. Right? But you just you just laying down one day after a game, and then all of a sudden your foot cramps mm -hmm. up, and it's just you want to scream. As we're talking, we have a, a long through ball up in Nia Johnson. She's chasing yep. it down, and here she comes Bingham again. Two forwards in the middle. Looks to play it over to Yobsis. Hit away by Bingham, and it'll be another corner for Averett. Not a lot of offsides call. Looks like Chapman addressed that in the uh, – Halftime speech and doing much better as Nani Ventura is now checking into the game for Katie, Caitlin Barber. You are right about that, John. We had 15 or 16 outside calls in the first half. It's been almost 14 yeah. minutes in the second half. We haven't done yet. Hopefully, it doesn't start now since we talked about it. But we haven't had any yet in the second half. Teams are doing a little better discipline wise to wait for the ball to come to them. As it's whipped in, finds the foot of Ana Yapsis as she. Kicks it off her uh, mm -hmm. weak foot, left foot, and it's a little bit left of the goal. Shot off target, but another shot for Avery. As uh, give a shout out to our athletic director who came down to watch our teams play, Meg Stevens. She always comes down and watch every game. She comes to women's soccer, men's soccer, football, basketball. She's very into the sports here. Avery, we really appreciate her. She's joined the crew about t two years now. And that's a bad touch. Yops just comes away with it with the shot. Wide left. Hit the post, John. Not the soccer post, but the football post. Uh, I was about to say, it. what <laughs> post are you looking at there, buddy? Wrong football. Yes, Meg Stevens, a former soccer coach, former women's soccer coach. Not here, but at another school. And has a great passion for the game, but she has a great passion for all Averett sports. If you come out to a game, you will most likely see her. It is true. Big supporter of it, probably one of the biggest supporters of favorite sports. This is Yops, just chase it down, and the right back just kicks it out of bounds. Meg Stevens, a notable character in the $1.5 million turf field you see before you. Built last year on its sophomore season now. And they will be continuing the building, uh, and if not finalizing it, when they add the stands directly across from us. It'll touch from 30 to 30. As it's now Laura Cowling into Yobsis. Yobsis with a good shot, unable as a tip back to her. Yobsis is knocked down, but the ref says they got ball. And about the stadium, John. I, I won't be here to um, experience it, but it's nice. I would love to come back as alumni, come and yeah. watch the stadium as we will be flipping the home and away side. As the press box we're in right. now will be the away side press box, yep. and we have our own home on the other side. It's going to be. Nice view of Havis. It's going to be fun just to come see our team play now. I mean, <laughs> when I first got here, it was all grass and yep, yep. patchy in the middle now. <laughs> tough, green, beautiful <laughs> turf with lacrosse and football and soccer lines on it. Lacrosse is a sport that's not here yet, but I think it's a foreshadowing. It's been talked about. <laughs> it's been talked about. <laughs> Meg has been trying to get women's and men's lacrosse here, as she has told me in a essay I actually did. I did an essay about her, and uh, I got an A. I wonder if she had something to do with that. <laughs> but uh, she told me about how she wants to get men's and women's lacrosse, but right now she says the Grand Center isn't big enough to hold both teams, as I understand, because even our men's soccer team having 30 players uh, is crowded in the locker room. So yeah, it's true. So um, cause that's a shot, and Johnson and Jones just collects it with her feet and clears it out to Johnson. But uh, that is a plan for Meg Stevens in the future. Also, they are going to renovate the Grant Center sooner or later as Morales She's down the there, line. Yeah. Another great attacking play by the Cougars. She cuts Morales. Morales makes a move. Looking for Yopsis in the middle, but doesn't get there. As Cowling comes on the backside oh. and challenges it. Kind of a challenge yeah. into a shot at the same time there, John. A yeah. little left of the goal, but way to keep playing to the whistle blows yeah. there, she John. Wants, she wants a goal. She's going to get it if she keeps up the hard work. That's right. You know, it was funny when people first saw the field, they were wondering, hey, Meg, why would you put the logo away from the press box? And then once we all saw the final product, we were like, oh, 
the stand the new stands are going on the other side of the field, so the logo will face you eventually. That is true, yeah, John. It's, it's mm -hmm. great planning and organizing by there by I thought the record she knew what she was doing is all the people were wondering why is this looking yep. like this? But <laughs> she knew. Deep she down knew. she she wouldn't tell us yet, but she knew what she was doing. She told me some plans she has for uh basketball as well, which I find very uh very intriguing to see how it plays out. I'm not gonna tell you because <laughs> don't won't don't want to ruin the surprise there. Thanks, man. That's always nice with surprises. <laughs> Hopefully that team will love it. If you ever want to know what's up her sleeve, just have a conversation with her. <laughs> she would she talk can to talk you. <laughs> she can talk your head off, not gonna lie. But it's always positive. She's always positive about her team. She's always positive about the sports she does and every student athlete here. So we got to admit that it is an honor to be at a, an Averett athlete. She takes another shot by deflecting again. She's trying again. She's, the opposite is really hustling inside the box today in the last couple of minutes here, John. She's taking four shots in the last, I believe, five minutes. And she's looking to get her name in the scorebook today. Mm -hmm. Only has one assist on the season. Looking for her first goal. It could come today. Has had numerous opportunities here in the second half. It looks like she's going to be the one to take the corner kick. So if it gets a goal, it's just tack on another assist. So it's a good low ball. Hits Mary Baldwin player in the stomach. That had to hurt. And it's going to be Bingham with the ball. Unable to corral it as it's going to go out of bounds for a Cougar throw. We've been saying Bingham a lot today, John. I don't want to force shot, but I think she's a key player for Mary Baldwin. I think she, she would is. get the man of the match for Team in Green today. <laughs> Senior defender. Out of Burlington, North Carolina. Not far from here. About half an hour down the road. Has been one of the key players, trying to do as much as she can, whether it's on defense. She moved up to forward for this half, see if she can do something on the offensive side. But she's a hard player. This is Santa Maria to send it in. 14 makes a move. Try to get it over to number one, Dal Delana Alvarez, who was checked back in the game from her early injury, John. Yep. Fortunately, number four or four more has not. Still cramping up on the side there. Very humid today. I saw like y'all was staying early in the – for the pregame, should have been raining all day, so the weather's changed for today's game. Everybody's got to adjust a little bit. Mm -hmm. yep. It's a good ball over to Meyer now. Just trying to move the ball around, keeping him play. No goals, no fouls, no injuries. Just keep the clock going. As Johnson working the sideline. Goes off to Morales, who hits it up to Ventura. Ventura tries to play it down the line. No go. Morales now has it. And just switch sides of the field with our backs. Yep. It's gonna go right over to the left back now. Franks Please. gives it up to Yopsis. And Yopsis will look to counter. And it hits off Yopsis, and it will go out for another Mary Baldwin throw. I read with a flick of the head there. She shot and felt a little, little child, a little tackle there, John. Yeah. That wasn't a soccer side. That was a football, a football Americano tackle, John. Yep. She took it down with her there. Well, uh, Felt got on the ball and was unable to get anything going with it, so she just covered it, waiting for someone to help her out. And then Alvarez came in and took her out. Felt's one of the most physical people on our team. And Don uh, Alvarez is a little small there for a striker, but she mm -hmm. took it down. Yep. This is now Morales to bring it up yet again. Gives it off to Johnson. Another sub for Avery is Heather Miles will re-enter the game at defensive mid for McLean here. As 12 comes in at 20 for 24, 12 times 2 is 24, but she takes it a shot right now. 12 times 2 is 24. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing for that one. I, I'm glad to know you know your math because, like, sometimes when I'm watching your guys' games and I look at the scoreboards, this is Johnson with a quick break. When I'm looking at your guys' scoreboard, I can't do the math of how much the t team is down. Chance with the cross, looking for Yapsis or Callan. Yapsis gets to the ball about inside the six-yard box almost. Looks for uh, Callan in the middle with a three-ball. Doesn't make it there. Gets deflated, but she gets it back. Passes it back to Franks. Franks crosses it, shoots it. One of them. 
as it goes over the goal for a goal kick for mm -hmm. Mary Baldwin. 12 times 2 is 24. I'm not going to let you live that one down. <laughs> Six nothing is your score still as we took under 23, 22 minutes now in the second half. Sarah Chapman going to get her first victory as a Averett coach in women's soccer. Uh, this is Nani Ventura with a great settle. Nani Ventura, freshman defender from Woodbridge, Virginia. And this is now Morales plays it through to Pippa Burge. Burge there. A little shove with the center back. Unable to get it. And does come away with it. Has a rip and a big save by Brittany Ten. Burge was right wide open in the middle by the penalty spot and just rips it just left of the goalkeeper. Great reactions by Ten. She hasn't turned off this game. Actually, we were talking about Chapman's first win today. Um... October is approaching. October is the breast cancer month, and we uh, try to wear pink in our sports, football, basketball, soccer. She is sporting the pink shorts today. Yeah, I, I there, saw uh, those. John. I saw those. The neon pink shorts by Chapman. As, a, as that last play was a big header by Nani Ventura. And this is Johnson fighting hard in the corner trying to keep it. And here's Morales to throw it into Ventura now. Ventura back to Morales. Plays it over to Miles. A little tripped up there as Miles recovers and gets it to Leslie Franks. Franks plays it forward to uh, Calvin Hill on number 17 on the left side, right side. Makes a move. Back to Franks up to Yopsis. Over to Calvin. A little triangle play over here. We try to move forward looking for a cross. She cuts back middle, gets to her right foot, finds Yapsen, but it is intercepted by one Delana Alvarez as she's battling with Yapsen and makes a good move between the legs. I don't want to say what it's called, but between the legs there. <laughs> as she makes a good move, back to Miles. We play it back to Morales. We settle again, looking forward, she's looking for a pass. She finds Nani Ventura as she's battling and is cleared by 13 as Pippa Berg is chased and she will let it go out for another Averett corner. Corner kick really getting up there in the counts, looking at almost 10 now for Averett. The last corner kick by Franks was standing on the head of one of my players, yeah. but it hit the post, the but post of the football. Well, I told you at the beginning of the game that Averett was going to be dangerous on the corner kicks because of their height. Mm -hmm. So, And they have taken advantage of it. Only one goal resulting from a corner kick. But and let's see the play they drew up here as it hits off Santa Maria. And Mary Baldwin still trying to clear it out, does. But there's Cassidy Felt there to put it back in. Gives it off to Callan. Callan and Miles. Miles and Lewis plays it back to Felt as he has a little time now. Plays it over to Linnea Meyer. Linnea Meyer. Freshman from Gotsen, Gothenburg, Sweden. Ooh. Why don't you try and say her high school? Let me see her high school name here, John. Linnea Meyer is from... Gothenburg, Sweden. Her high school name is A S P E R O S Sparrow, and the last name is Idrot Gymnasium. Mm -hmm. Asparo Idrot Gymnasium. I've got help from my sports information director, Mr. Drew Wilson, <laughs> there on the pronunciation. I like to thank him for that. As we have another offsides call, it was Nani Ventura there, but. I remember um, Martin Aronstead, the former senior goalie for the men's soccer team, had a crazy high school, and the only word I could say was gymnasium, and he <laughs> said, that means high school in Swedish. So there you go. You learned a new word today. Ball is intercepted by Miles. She plays it forward to Yapsi. Yapsi looking forward. Yapsi plays it through ball to the bird. She's on side. She has a chance here. One on one with the goalie has a rip, and it is just – Wide of the goal as Pippa Berg seems a little disappointed herself trying to get a goal today as she just missed the right side there, John. Yep. Pippa Berg has not scored this year, I believe. Avery is looking for her first goal of the year. As we had a sub there for um, number five, Leslie Frames comes out for number seven, Emer Redding. Redding, sorry, Redding. <laughs> Remember the color. 
That's Ventura with the cleanup there. Gives over to Yobsis. Yobsis will have a hit. It's over. And it goes out for a corner. Ten was on her toes, but almost knocked it out. Almost knocked it in her own net. I know Tin has surrendered uh, six goals, John, but she has to have at least 15 saves also. I mean, she's playing well for her uh, right. circumstances. She's had a lot of shots taken to her today, a lot of shots on target, but she has at least 15 saves. She's given up six, though, but she's playing well, continuing to play hard for her team as the corner gets whipped in and finds the cow on the far side, crossed back in by Johnson, cleared by 16 for Mary Baldwin. 16 is... Coming up the field now. This is ready now, and it's intercepted by Vent Ventura. Ventura at the top of the key, looks for the cross, and the goalie picks it off. Brittany Ten there has been on her toes all game. And she throws it out to Redden now, and Redden will have a little fun running up the field now as this is Callen back. Goes over to Yobsis. Yobsis is on sides. Yobsis with some fancy footwork, puts a shot up and wide right. For the middle of the second half, John, it seemed like everybody was trying to shoot the ball. We were trying to just have possession. But now we are letting it rip. <laughs> well, they all saw Ornberg and Sky Gun just put them in from distance. They were like, why can't we do it? Checking in the game for Yasu, is number 22, Ashley Yondo. She's one of the people who's in my class to me. So I'm happy to see her get forward today. She usually plays center back, but... She's been subbed in to play left wing slash striker here. She's trying to get her first goal of the season. She enjoys ripping it for long on a uh, free kick, so maybe she gets lucky, finds a little <laughs> run, and she puts one in the net for her first goal of the season. It'd be nice to say that to her if I can see her in class tomorrow and tell her congratulations. <laughs> yes, she definitely is one of those players that does have a powerful rip. Uh, she is now on the ball. Gives it over to Miles now. Miles plays it over to Morales. Morales looking to come up with it, does. Finds Johnson. Johnson is on sides. And Megs Bingham. As there comes Johnson still day. going. Very technical Johnson is on the able to work against Bingham. It's been back and forth between them. As Morales plays it back to Felt. Felt will pass it in to uh, Ventura. Gives it over to Birds. Birds fighting now. Birds looking for something to open up. Taking her time in the box, looking for a cross, doesn't get it deflected. It finds the foot of Ventura. Ventura makes a good move, and a Ventura's good break. Right she has there. a shot. It Ooh. is blocked as Pippenberg gets the rebound. Has a shot herself, and it is parred by the goalie and picked up by the goalie for another <sighs> save, John. That's impressive. They had a lot of power from Pippa Burge's shots, and it was a big save by Brittany Tent. <sighs> Coming down to the last third of the second half, John. Avery still leads 6-0. On the way to their first win of the season, first win in the conference, first win for the coach Chapman also. A lot of firsts today. First win for first. the goalie, Ashley Johns. First goals for some players as well, whether it's their collegiate career or whether it's for the season. And this is Miles now. Plays it over to Callen. Can Callen get there? Can't. Ball was a little faster than she was, unfortunately. And it'll go back to Mary Baldwin here on the throw. Throws it over to Miles now. To Yondo just runs through the ball. Still running. Bodied. You don't see Yondo get bodied very no, often. No, you John. don't. When you do, you got to say, wow. Yeah, that's Redden fighting for it, and it'll go Mary Baldwin's way. It's going to be Santa Maria with the kick here. Big kick. And Myers there to clean it up as no Baldwin player was in sight to get it. This is Meyer to bring it up. Gets it up to Redden now. Redden powering through. It's going to be Redden with the throw, too. 
Gives it off to Callen. Callen with a little shove. And there's Ventura. A through ball looking for number one, Dalla Alvarez. Goes all the way through for a goal kick, John. It's a low ball played to Cassidy Felt. Played over to Morales now. Back to Miles. Miles looking for someone to open up. We'll find Meyer. Gives it over to Cowling. Cowling plays it up to Redding. And it's a good step by Miles there. This is now Ventura, and she'll play Burge. Burge has a clean break now, followed by Bingham, though. Makes a good move. Pays over to Johnson. Johnson's on the far right. Tries to cross it in looking for Yondo. It doesn't get there. Instead, the bat's headed in by Ventura. Yep. And cleared away by Murray. Ball went up to Heather Miles. And there's Miles still with the ball. Still with the ball. <laughs> Makes a good move. Plays looking over to Yondo. Yondo is onside. Here's her chance, John. Here's her chance, and she is... Blocked away, a run, rebound. Oh, oh. wow. <laughs> Brittany, 10 with the double save there. First on Yondo gets back up to a wide open Pippa Bird who took too long of a touch and hits it right at 10 again. Great double save by Brittany, 10. She has not given up on her team yet. Her reactions, her, her guessing ability, her talent, her something is going great here in the late part of the second half. And she's been on her line, on her move, on her correct just a correct game today John she's yeah. making a lot of saves lately in the second half the last two were a strike by Yondo most power on the team maybe could be arguability and then another shot by another powerful striker Berg is also a kick save <laughs> there by 10 and she's probably in the 20s now we would be able to tell you the real number uh, at the post game stats but she's almost probably 20 saves now John my goodness that is very impressive as this is now Johnson looking for something to open up. Finds Burge. Hits it back out to Morales. Over to Miles. Gives it to Redden. Finds Callen. Good movement by the Cougars here. As Callen hits it back up to Redden. Redden with a move here. Puts it over to Callen. Callen will play it down the line. Looking for something to open up in the center. Has a good hit. And keeps it in. Mary Baldwin does. And now it's going to go out of bounds for another Averett University Cougar throw in. And it's going to be running, played it over to Yondo. And Yondo will just miss hit it out of bounds. Coming into the last 10 minutes of the game, John score is still 6 0 with Avery University on their way to their first win again. We've been staying a lot. Yep. Now that's Miles to put it back into Yondo. Met by the center back, number 10, Janelli Ramos. I said earlier, John, that I believe uh, Bingham could have a man in match, but I might have to take that back and give it to the All-American goalie for Mary Baldwin today, John. Yeah. She's been on her mark today. She's playing very well. I believe I, for the green, I would give it to her. <laughs> but uh, for the white, there is a couple options, John. Yeah. I'm not sure what we're going to choose for white, Avery, today. We have I'll let you decide because. You're better at decision-making than I am. I'll <laughs> let you know that. And Pippa Burge is on sides. She has to have this one. She has Yonla with her. She didn't select the pass. She had a shot, and she is trying her hardest today, John, to yep. get her first goal of the year, and she is not being successful. I know it's getting to her now. Yep, unable to finish today as Pippa uh, Burge has had numerous shots on target, but 10 has just rose to, rose to the occasion and just made every save possible. As uh, This is Cowling now. Cowling unable to keep it in. And this is Alvarez, but the ball is out of bounds. It'll be Averett throw. Went over to Yondo. Back to Redden. Over up to Miles. 
Miles plays it down to Morales. Morales over to Johnson. A little test on the sideline as it goes off Morales' ankle and throw in from Ray Baldwin. A quick throw in from Ray Baldwin. She tries to find her teammate. Another tussle with Morales there. Morales is a little more on the small side, but she's playing strong today with big number 12 over there, over there for Mary Baldwin. Johanna Braun, she's 5'8", and, and uh, Rose is only 5'4". And four. through again for Pippa Burge, but Bingham is back there to pick it up, and Burge fights again and gets the ball to trickle away. Puts it in for Yonda. Oh! Got a little, little matter or up there as it hit her shoulder as she tries to <laughs> chest it down for a volley attempt, maybe. Yep. This is now Callen gets pushed down, and Mary Baldwin will go on the attack, taken away by Redden. And here comes Alvarez, slipped away by Callen. And now Redden will have it. She'll carry it forward, gives it over to Yondo. Yondo and she is a little bit off yeah. Back she, to it there. A little frustration on her side. She really wants that goal. They kick up. Miles with the header. Powerful header there. Bounces over, over Ramos, and here comes Yondo. Giving chase, and it goes off the foot of 10, but Goldie's there. She picks it up. Mm -hmm. Off her line, John, and it took him down to five minutes left in the second half. As the Ava Cougars are on their way, way, well on their way to a win here, as it's being a goalie kick for number 18, who's been on her game today very well. Yep. And this is played outside. Looks like Johnson's going to get there. Morales calls her off, and Morales will carry forward. Great first touch. And Morales is still going, being pushed. And it'll be an Averitt Cougar free kick now. And it looks like Linnea Meyer coming up to take this one. Chance to see her foot power here from a stop ball. Good power in the box. Over to Ventura. Ball is loose. Goalie's out. Finds Yondo. Passes out to Johnson. Johnson recrosses it. Deflected and cleared by Mary Bowen there. Close one there as it trickled away from 10, but luckily her defense was there. And this will be Morales with time to settle. Plays it back to Felt. Felt will play it to Jones. Jones has plenty of time. Passes it to Redden. Finds and Yondo, Yondo on the touch. Yondo Oof. lets the ball play back, looks over, sees Pippa Berg, passes to Pippa Berg. Pippa Berg is offside. Oh. A university there. Mm -hmm. Did not see the last defender there and kept running and got caught on the offside strap. As looks to the far side, uh, uh, John, the Ava football team <laughs> has got ready to, for practice for their afternoon practice tonight. They have all their pads in. They're full pads today as Avery has a big game Saturday trying to come in the win column for the men's football team. They're cheering on their lady Cougar women's team as they're getting ready for practice. Probably waiting for the field to open up. <laughs> Absolutely. This is Morales playing it over to Felt. Felt down the line to Yondo. Yondo's wide open and Cowling now gets the touch. Cowling will carry it down. She's got the she didn't have the step, but lost it to number six, Bailey McWilliams. Three minutes three minutes left to play in the second half. This is the throw from Redden over to Cowling. Unable to get it. Hand over to Felt. And the referee on this side says that it went out of bounds. And it will be an Averitt throw. Redden plays it into Yondo. Yondo is now in the box. Hits it over to 10. Goes out of bounds off of Yondo. And it's going to be a corner kick for the Cougars. It'll be Heather Miles to take it. Yeah. 
Another Miles with a good boot. And on the header is Yondo, but it goes high and wide for the goal kick. That's her third attempt from a corner today, John. Mm -hmm. Two been saved by the goal, and that was a little bit off target. <laughs> frustrating day in the box <laughs> down for the head for Yondo, but not as frustrating as for Mary Baldwin yeah. this afternoon. Good clearance up the field. Yondo gets the header on. Mary Baldwin's number 15, Santa Maria. Just watch it go out of bounds as we tick under two minutes here. Fifteen taking the time here to clear the ball out of the out of bounds yeah. play by Yondo. I don't think that's been a sub for uh, Mary Baldwin since those injuries, and I'm pretty sure those girls' legs are very, very heavy right now. Not to mention the heat they have to play in. It's been a tough game for Mary Baldwin, as it'll be miles to play it. Tries to get it around, and it's taken away. Almost something on, just a mistouch by number 12, Yona Bren, or Johanna Bren. As uh, is Morales with 50 seconds left. It looks like the Cougars will just sit on it back here. 45 seconds remaining. And Redden looks to go for Glory. Uh, she'll play Cowling, and that'll go out for an offsides call. 30 seconds. 30 seconds remaining on the clock here. And it'll be uh, the first for everything dip. First win for Coach Sarah Chapman. First win for the Avery Cougars this season. First win on the USA South Conference. And we'll have one more attempt here as it looks like Pippa Burge runs in, but 10's Ten, there to clear it. Nine, eight, and with 10 six, seconds left, five, Averitt's going to take this one three, six to two, nil one, for their first three, conference win of the season. And their first, first win of the season. And your final score, Averitt 6, Mary Baldwin 0. Some second half goals there by Sky Gunn, Johanna Ornberg. I believe Sky Gunn again, was it? Oh, boy. Uh, my memory's <laughs> lost here, John. But I know we had three quickers in the first two minutes and change. <laughs> well... We're going to take a quick break here, but when we come back, we're going to have your final stats for you. Averitt on top for the first time this season, 6 nothing. We will be right back.
and welcome back to the Avery Sports Network. We're wrapping up a 6 nothing victory by your Avery Cougars over the Mary Baldwin College Squirrels. We're going to look at some quick stats here before we send you off. Uh, um, 34 shots overall for the Cougars, and uh, Mary Baldwin ended up getting three shots there in the second half, two on goal. Mary, uh, Averett had 21 on goal. 14 corners total for Averett this uh, afternoon. Four fouls even apiece. 19 offsides for the Cougars. None for Mary Baldwin. Two saves for Ashley Jones in her first victory. And 15 saves for uh, Brittany 10. Definitely looked like she did more work out there than 15 after facing 35 shots altogether. Three shots faced for Ashley Jones. Looking at some of the individual stats now, we have... Uh, two goals scored by Sky Gunn, two goals scored by Johanna Ornberg, and one goal by Amanda Gustafson. Um, looking ahead, and also the sixth, uh, third goal was an own goal off a deflection after hitting off the foot of Sky Gunn. Uh, it is listed as an own goal. So Averitt looks to uh, continue this uh, amazing, um, good, good performance that they're on as they head to Greensboro this Saturday with the men's soccer team to have a doubleheader. Women's soccer will play at 2 o'clock for the first leg of a five-game road trip. First they head there, then they go to uh, f um, to other conference opponents. And then looking ahead also on your favorite sports information, we do like to remind you one last time that this week is homecoming week. Averett men's football team, which you see on the screen right now, is uh, getting ready to fight the Panthers of the Grange as they come down to, uh, or excuse me, come up to Danville, Virginia to take on the Averett Cougars in the first USA South Conference meet meeting of the football team. And it is supposed to be a good one, but the weather, however, is looking a little tough. I am joined by Dip Pinnell for this post-game report. Dip, what did you like? To, what did you see well out today from the uh, Averett Cougar women today? First of all, I saw a win, which is very good for us to have. First <laughs> Every, of all, but everyone also loves one of those. Inside the details of the game, I saw a lot of aggressiveness from Avery today. We uh, had fun. We played the ball well. Once we figured out the outside trap, we got our runs and times very well. We finished in front of goal today, even though their goalie did have a great game in front of goal. We finally finished in front of goal, had a little confidence, pitched them away. A couple of long strikes by Johan Armberg from outside the box also looked good today. Sky Gunn, a freshman, came along also good today. A um, couple of defenders in the middle, Heather Miles and McLean, also played well. Yondo always plays well right there. She's strong in the back. Most importantly, for the first time, we finally got to see our strikers come along, work as a team, make the passes along. Um, and actually try and finish in front of the goal today. Hopefully the strikers, whenever you score in a game, no matter what sport it is, football, basketball, soccer, the team just plays better. Absolutely. So when we get a couple of scores on the board, the defense come along also. Defense gets tired of playing defense so much when they're not putting points on the board. Put some points on the board. Maybe uh team come along better today. Like today we played well. Both sides of the field possessed the ball very well. Just today was a good game by the Avery Cougars. Yep, and Mary Baldwin moves to 3-5 and five on the season, 0-5 in, in conference play. Averitt moves to 1-6-1 one, and one on the season. One and three in conference play, so that'll definitely boost their rankings in the standings. But it's still early, of course, as the women have at least seven or eight more conference games before the tournament. And we will be live at every home game just about, whether it's stats or broadcast. Averitt Sports Network is the place to go for your Averitt information on athletics. Well, the girls finished 6 nothing at this half. Dip, I have nothing more to say about this amazing performance by the women's soccer team. Do you? No, sir. I'm just proud of our women today. Congratulations, women, on your first win. Congratulations, Coach Chapman, on her first win, John. Absolutely. To all the coaching staff on their first win, to all the girls that scored today on their first goals, and to the program on getting its first win of the season. I'm John Matriciano, joined by... Dip Pinnell in our broadcast station on the Averitt Sports Network. We thank you for watching the Averitt Sports Network and this matchup, and we hope that you have a great night. This has been a production of the Averitt Sports Network.